So we've seen that it's possible to create primitives and projection map onto them, but what if you need to create a more complicated model, like for example these stairs or a building? Nuke ships with a tool called Model Builder that you can use with a calibrated camera to generate models using photogrammetry. So you need a camera that's calibrated to the set, so either tracking with the camera tracker in stills mode or sequence mode. And then you attach the source footage to the model builder, the calibrated camera to the model builder, and then you view at the model builder node. You have to look through the calibrated camera and you have to have it selected in this edit mode, in the locked mode. And so then this will become your viewport for editing in 3D while looking at the 2D image. Now you notice when the model builder is active, you have some additional controls that pop up around the viewer. Uh, a very important control are the pick masks here, which will control which mode that you can pick in, and then also align and edit mode. Every project in Model Builder starts in align mode. Align mode is how you get the geometry lined up with the set using photogrammetry. So let's let's start with a simple example. We are going to create a cube for this pillar here. So I'll, I'll move to a frame where I can see it pretty well and I'm going to create a cube and just drag it out right here in the viewport. And you'll see when it first drops into the scene, it just drops right in the middle of the scene. It doesn't really know where it needs to be in 3D space. And since we're in align mode, we can start aligning it to that. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to drag it to that corner of that pillar there, that uh, handrail. And before I do any other points, before I attempt to align any other points, I'm going to get this one point aligned pretty well. So I'm going to move to a different frame of the sequence. And I will drag that to align it to that point. You'll see Model Builder has already constrained it to the line in perspective that it knows it must be in. And I've just created an additional constraint by dragging it. So I'll do it again here. And it's doing the best it can to align it to that corner. Now, because the track is a little sloppy and we know that, it's not going to be perfect. But it's aligning pretty well through this whole section of the shot. Now I can start aligning other parts of the cube to make it line up. So I'm going to constrain that corner to that corner of that and this corner to this corner and as I keep adding these constraints model builder gets a little bit smarter and smarter each time about where this model must be in 3d space the shape I'm giving it more and more clues each time I give it another constraint so Let's rock it through this way. And I see I have to constrain these as well. I only need to do that one. And now Model Builder's got a pretty good idea of where that's supposed to be in 3D space. It's, and again, it's floating off a little bit because our, we know our track isn't perfect. Now that I've got it pretty much aligned along that one plane, I can start modeling on it. So rather than align these corners, I've aligned the top pretty well. Let's uh, let's make sure we got this as good as we can get it here. I've created a lot of constraints. And you'll see that it gives you a little view here just like the tracker node of the 2D part of the 
image that you're constraining it to. Okay, so that's looking like it's pretty well aligned, but in order to fully align it along three dimensions, we have to pick at least one, one point that's along this third axis. So I'm going to take this one, and we'll also take this opportunity while we're aligning it to, to drag it down to the floor here. So we're simultaneously aligning it and also finishing this shape. So we'll rock through here. Make sure that we've got it aligned well. And we'll create another constraint here at the very beginning to get this aligned along this plane where we want it. Here we go. So we've got our column pretty much roughed in and fully aligned using, you know, at least four points and we can start editing it in edit mode. And this uh, this shape here's got a little knob on the top of it, so let's let's go about starting to make that. I think the easiest way to do it might be to extrude the top up a little bit and then then bevel it out or something. So, I'm going to go into edit mode and we'll make sure that we're in this is the selection mask here. You can select the mode that you want to edit in here or you can right click in the viewport to select the mode you like. So let's just do it right in the viewport here. We're all already in face selection and that's what I want. So I will, uh, right now I have occlusion testing disabled for the viewport, but I'm going to turn it back on. Now I have occlusion testing enabled. So it will only select the front face that it sees and I can start editing the geometry. So I'm going to scoot it down a little bit below there and then I'm going to extrude it up a little so I'm gonna right click to select extrude you could also hit return and now that face will extrude up and if I wanted to I could scale it while I'm here and hold control shift and you can scale it just as you can scale object in the viewport, objects in the viewport. I'm going to hit return again to turn on bevel mode, bevel it up a bit. And then we have that little shape that's on top of that pole. Now if we wanted to bevel the very top of this, I'm going to click anywhere. I'm going to go into edge selection mode and select the edges of this shape by clicking on them. If I hold down shift, I can continue to add edges to my selection. So click there and then hold down shift and lasso over the additional edges that I want to add into my selection. And I'm going to bevel those edges. And you'll notice when I when bevel tool becomes active, I've got some choices here about how much I want to inset it and I can also adjust the level of how many additional edges to add to it in the rounding here. So let's just keep it simple. We don't need a whole lot of geometry here. Just going to bevel it a little bit. I'll click in the viewport to drop the selection and I'm going to go to face selection mode. Select this top face and pull it up a little bit there. There we go. So we got that one column, and you could uh, we could go through and let's uh, set up uh, let's set up a step here and start building some steps. We'll use a similar method for building the the step. So we'll start from a view where we can kind of see what we're doing, and we'll go into align mode, and then we'll create a cube. Just drop it down and we'll constrain the first corner that we want to constrain. Then we'll roll back to some other part in the scene, drag that up to constrain it a little bit better, and we'll do the best we can locking down this 
one point before we move on to constraining the rest of the cube. So then we'll constrain that corner. It should pretty, pretty much snap in pretty good. We'll constrain this corner. And then we'll constrain one corner along the bottom here. Now we may need to coach this a little bit more. We'll see. But each time you drag one of these points, what you're doing is you're creating a constraint that's telling Nuke this point can only be in this area, in this place, and that will help it lock it in in 3D. So we'll rock through here, see how that's doing. Seems to be lining up pretty well. And so now we have our first step. So to build this, the rest of the steps, we're going to use a slightly different technique. We're going to go into edit mode and we're going to select edges and we're going to start extruding along edges. So I'm hitting enter and I'm extruding up. And I'm going to rock through here just to make sure that I'm extruding this step up the right amount. And I'll hit enter again and I can extrude, extrude back. And again, I'm going to rock through to make sure that I'm extruding the correct amount. And just progressively keep going through, hit enter again, extrude it up. Oops, I don't think I got that one in quite the right place. Hit enter, extrude it up. Hit enter, extrude it back again. Let's rock through and make sure that we're getting this in the right place. and so on. So you can see it could get a little tedious, but uh, there's really no other way when you're doing image-based modeling than to, uh, unless you've got your cameras extremely well calibrated and you know that your thing is perfectly square to your calibration, uh, you typically will have to go through and validate from various views the fact that you're keeping your geometry in the right place. But using this uh, edge extrude technique or extruding boxes into shapes, especially when you get your world calibrated up fairly well and nice and square, you can, you can model with a fairly high level of confidence. You've already started to drift off a little bit here. And part of the problem is that I know that the, as uh, we've already inspected this, the camera solve is a little bit sloppy in some spots. So we have to kind of, because we, we, went with a kind of uh, inaccurate solve, that would be the side effect of that, is that you would have situations where the camera maybe wasn't as aligned as well as you would expect it to be, simply because your solve was a little bit sloppy. So here we go, you just keep going through and you'd build a shape like this eventually. So if you wanted to create a, a bit of a bevel, if you wanted to create a bit of a bevel on these edges, just like we did here, you could select these edges. We're already in edge selection mode. Select the edges you want. I'm holding down shift, clicking on the edges I want to select to multi-select them, and then select bevel, and you can bevel edges, and you'll see you get this additional set of controls. Oops, I just selected some that I didn't want, so I'm going to undo and then hold down Alt and Shift and deselect that one there. Uh, you can also, once you've built up a simple shape like this, you could take it back into a more complete 3D program like Moto and complete your model, and you can get the cameras and the model out and continue image-based modeling using a similar technique. Once you've aligned things in here, some basic primitives to get things fleshed out, you could export the point cloud 
and the geometry using the right geo node. So if you connect everything you want to export to the scene here, including the camera and the point cloud, you can export in FBX and export your camera and your model and your point cloud and everything. Or you can bake out the geometry here before you write it. So you're not going to be able to write it from here, but you can bake the geometry to its own geometry node that you can then connect to the scene. So we can select the geometry we want to bake here, and then click Bake Selected Geometry, and then Model Builder will freeze out a node that only has that geometry in it the geometry we've created. And you can connect that up to your scene node and use that to write out only the things you wanted to bake out to your right geo node.